So in June, we learned that sometimes debates can matter. The question now is, did last night's debate matter? Of course, you may be one of the people who didn't even watch it. Instead, chose to watch the CW's marathon of The Connors, the show where they killed off the main character and then just kept doing the show like nothing happened. Does that sound familiar? But here are a few reasons why last night's debate might matter. Number one, this may be the only one before November. So the pressure was on. And the candidates had very different preparation strategies. Kamala got to Pennsylvania last Thursday for six days of nonstop debate prep. The only thing that sounds more miserable than six days of debate prep is six days with Kamala Harris. I assume it was mostly giving her canned answers and telling her what faces to make. That's what I would have done. It's not like she's going to have a great off-the-cuff moment. But the Harris team really got into it, doing highly choreographed debate practice sessions. There's a stage and replica TV lighting and an advisor not just playing Donald J. Trump, but inhabiting him, wearing a boxy suit and a long tie. Goes to show you can't get more than two Democrats in a room without someone suggesting a game of dress-up. Trump, on the other hand, continued his schedule of rallies and appearances, but also made time to get ready. The former president's preparations are more improv. They are pointedly called not debate prep, but policy time which is what political nerds want him to stick to. And sure, it's great to hit her where she's weak, like on the border. That's the immigrants' plan anyway. But Trump gets plenty of practice hitting those points at his rallies. I would have just had him train in a replica of the Dean Martin roast set. And reason number two why this debate may matter, it happened in the swing state of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania and its 19 electoral college votes are widely seen as holding the keys to the White House in 2024. So if they want to take out Trump, they need to do it in Pennsylvania, a state where people don't have a great record of trying to take out Trump. But specifically, the debate happened happened in the historic city of Philadelphia. And with how Kamala's accent keeps changing, I have expected her to talk like Rocky the whole time. ABC took over the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, mere steps from Independence Hall, where the Founding Fathers crafted both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Which is pretty cool. I got most of my education from TV, so I thought the most historically important place in Philadelphia was wherever the Lawrence Brothers lived. Remember that show? Just me? This was the first time Kamala ever met Trump, and it's the first time she's debated anyone since 2020 with Mike Pence, a debate that was about as forgettable as, well, Mike Pence. Point is, she's rusty, and she didn't have any of her usual safety nets. No teleprompter, no partners, and if she got off track, she couldn't have Lil Jon come out and do a Lil concert. D.P. Harris! Come to war! Kamala started off nervous. Her sentences were wandering, and she had dry mouth. She had a few more coherent moments, but what's getting passed around lefty Twitter is all those faces. Of course, making a condescending face doesn't qualify you for the presidency, but it does make certain women at home feel like she's winning the argument. Yay, democracy. Trump had some good barbs, hit hard on border issues, and asked some pretty basic questions. She just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? He tried to reframe as much as he could, which was tough, because as many have said, it was three against one. So, bottom line, did it matter? It's tough to judge this one, because the most recent debate we witnessed was an all-time disaster. So our scorecards are all messed up. Kamala is like the last girl at the dance. She doesn't have to be gorgeous, she just has to be there. Trump had a high bar to clear. He had to hold his own in a three-on-one match. He had to turn the conversation back to immigration and the economy, point to his record, and he cleared that bar. Kamala had a much lower bar. Do better than Biden, but she cleared it. Heck, it was enough to get an endorsement from Taylor Swift, seen here with a traditional Haitian breakfast. Maybe she was impressed with the debate, or maybe she was just waiting to see who Dick Cheney was going to vote for. But if we're limiting the commentary to the debate, they both did what they needed to. Does it matter? I don't think so. It wasn't a turning point. When the story of this election is told, this debate probably won't be mentioned. After this kind of thing, people want to hear superlatives. This is the most blank debate I've ever seen. This was the blankest moment yet for the whatever campaign. If you want that kind of thing, there are plenty of other shows you can watch. But do those shows have references to the short-lived NBC sitcom Brotherly Love? I don't think so. 